Uh, last Sunday, Pastor Brant, thank you for uh, doing such a great job kicking off our vision series. Uh, you might recall we talked about six core values that we hold to here at Walloon. Let me remind you quickly. Jesus is our everything. Jesus is the main thing we talk about. He's the one we lift highest. He's the one we point people to the most. Uh, if anything, uh, we're a little bit Jesus crazy, guilty here at Walloon. Uh, prayer is our power. Uh, we believe it in it so much that I can't remember a meeting I've had uh, in a long time where we don't pray and at first ask the Lord for guidance and wisdom. We seek God in our gatherings, our decisions, and in our private lives as well. Family is our framework, is the third core value, church family. That's what that's about, because God's plan to reach and change the world is, what is it? It's a local church. <laughs> So he's going to use us. We do better. We grow better together. Fourth, Scripture is our source. The Bible is our foundation for everything we teach, preach, and practice. I said this. I was over at East Jordan last Sunday. The first Sunday, we don't open God's Word. You ready, Henry? I'm done. It's my last. Yeah, I say that every membership class. I say it because this is a Bible church. Uh, this is our instruction manual for life. Uh, number five, love is our lifestyle. We want to love like Jesus. We received from the Lord. Now we pass it and share it with others. And six, outreach is our objective. Lost people matter to Jesus, so they matter to us. And uh, Jesus came to seek and to save the lost. Okay, that's why he came. I talked with somebody this past week, and they said, you know, Pastor Jeff, I think I'm going to memorize those six. And I, w I said, really? He said, yeah, I think they're so core to who we are. And he said, more than that, they're really core to who I am. I I'm going to try to memorize these six family values. And I said, uh, great idea. I think I'm going to work at it too. I think I will, and I would encourage you to do as well. This morning, we're going to move on from the values to the actual discipleship path. And uh, we're, we're going to get that up on the screen if you have it there, Caleb. There you go. Uh, this is our new disciple. Well, actually, it's new in the sense that it's simplified, it's there, it's clear. We've been working on this for almost three years, okay? So, uh, and here's why. Uh, simple is hard. Did you know that? It, to make something clear and simple and make sense, and for us to fit our mission and our values, that's really hard. So this is the result. You can leave that up there, Caleb. Uh, three staff retreats, a board retreat, dozens of meetings, uh, chaired by Pastor Chad. I can't tell you how many times uh, he'd say, well, we're going we're gonna to have uh, our next steps. Are you kidding me? Another one? But anyway, Chad said, no, we're going we're gonna to finish. So just before we get going, thank you, Pastor Chad. Well done. This, this is his leadership here. Uh, nice job. Come on, join with me. Yeah. Because that wouldn't have happened unless he just kept us on task, okay? Today, we begin with the first step. Actually, it's the first three, uh, but it really it all comes under the heading of come. We're, we want to invite people to come. And Caleb, you could just leave that up there for a little while. It, it includes new here, next steps, and come. Next Sunday... We're going to talk about connect, the importance of groups, life groups in the church family. And two weeks from now, we'll examine uh, the steps of contribute and continue. Thanks, Caleb. You can bring that down now. I, I begin now with a serious question. Here's my question. When you and I become followers of Jesus, okay, track with me. I need a solution for my sinfulness. I believe that Jesus Christ left the glory and splendor of heaven, took on human form, and he took the hit on the cross for my greatest problem, your greatest problem. We're sinners. 
That's our greatest problem in life. Jesus took our place in the grave. He literally, bodily, physically arose from the dead for me. I believe those facts for me. I open the door of my life and receive Jesus, Savior, Lord, King. I'm born again. I'm redeemed, saved, name in the Lamb's book of life. Okay? So you got that? And I suspect many, if not most of you, yep, that's me. Now here's my question. Why doesn't Jesus at that moment say, well done, come on to heaven with me? Let's, let's just go to heaven. Let, let's skip all the, the pain and the tears and you don't have to deal with Satan anymore and death. Um, why don't we just go straight to enjoying eternal life and home in glory with, with the Lord? That, that sounds like it'd be a pretty good plan. Can I get an amen there? Yeah. Well, why isn't that the way it works? <laughs> Save us a whole lot of trouble. Okay. Why does Jesus leave us here on earth? He must have a particular purpose for us because he leaves us. Now we're his follower and we're, he, he must have something left for us to do. So, so here's my question. What is it? We know Jesus. We're born again, sealed with the Holy Spirit. What is our agenda while we wait for Jesus to call us home? So I... As, as great as singing is, did you know there's going to be a lot of singing in heaven? So it's not, it's not, we can do that now. We can do that in heaven. Uh, it's not prayer. It's not praise because we can do that in the new heaven and new earth. And we do that right now. It's not just enjoying the church family, Scott, um, because we'll enjoy each other in the new heaven and the new earth. And we can do that now. So I ask again, what's the key thing that we're called to do on earth now that we won't be able to do in heaven? Locate with me Acts chapter 1 in your Bible, on your phone. Uh, Acts chapter 1 records for us the launching of the church, okay? Uh, just before Jesus ascends to the right hand of the Father, Jesus tells us very clearly, okay, here's what I want my followers to be all about, okay? These are his final instructions before he ascends to glory, and uh, he tells us very clearly what we must be busy doing today, okay? He, he, he frankly kind of says, you can't do this after you're dead and in heaven with me, it's too late, so what is it we're supposed to be doing? Would you stand with me? If you're able, let's read out loud together. Final words of Jesus. We'll start with verse 6 and read down together to verse 8. Read with me. Here we go. So when the apostles were with Jesus, they kept asking him, Lord, has the time come for you to free Israel and restore our kingdom? He replied, the Father alone has the authority to set those dates and times, and they're not for you to know. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere, in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for uh, not leaving us clueless with what we're supposed to be doing today. Thank you for making it clear. And Lord, uh, I'm asking that even today you'd come and take charge in your church. Help us to listen and respond to what you have to say to us, your, your prompts, your still small voice as we dig into the owner's manual for our lives. And Lord, what we're going to find today is simple enough for a small child to understand and comprehend. So thank you for making it clear. But the truth is, Lord, uh, this is something that most of us as adults are afraid to do. So we need your help not just to understand, but help us, Lord, to put into action what you're commanding us to do. 
So we're ready to respond. We're ready to put it into action. We need your help. We invite your Holy Spirit to come and take charge today personally in our individual lives. But Lord, uh, we invite you corporately. You come and be the king today in your church. And all the church family at Walloon Lake said with one unified voice, Amen. you can be seated. So what is that one thing that Jesus orders us to do? He says, you can't wait till heaven. It's too late. I want you to be my witnesses. That, that's, that's the answer. In the new heaven and the new earth, are you ready? Okay. There will be no lost people. There will be no people who've rejected Jesus and the cross and the empty tomb. Okay? All in heaven will be born again, saved, redeemed followers of King Jesus. So once we die and get to heaven, it's too late. Therefore, our duty, our responsibility is to witness and tell others that are around us, what we know about Jesus, okay? Right now, today, your responsibility and mine is to speak up and tell others about King Jesus. A witness tells what he or she knows, okay? That's the definition of a, we tell what we've seen, we tell what we've heard. A witness is someone who furnishes evidence, in a courtroom, a witness puts his hand on the Bible and swears promises, I promise what I'm going to say is truthful. I'm about to tell the truth. A witness is a person who tells the truth about Jesus Christ. That, that's what we're called to do. Uh, very clearly, look again, Acts 1, verse 8, it says, but you're going to receive power and then you're going to be my witnesses. You, followers of Jesus, you're my witnesses. Not if you have the gift of evangelism. Some of you are thinking, well, I, I, I'm not gifted that way, Pastor Jeff. I, I don't have the gift just to freely talk to anybody and everybody. Not if it's convenient and comfortable. Not if you feel safe. Excuse me, but I'm introverted. I don't talk to people I don't know. Look again at verse 8. You, everybody, will be my witnesses. <laughs> it's a strong command. Now, how many of you today consider yourself a follower of Jesus? Can I see your hands? Okay. How many of you say, yep, I'm born again. Keep your hands up. I'm born again, Jesus following Christian. Okay, good. Okay, now I know who I'm talking to. You can put your hands down. These are the final words of Jesus. On earth, he's about to go to the right hand of the Father, okay? He's been here doing this awesome work. He resurrected from the dead. It says that he was appearing, and, and now he says, this is aimed at you. Everybody who just raised your hand, this is not a suggestion. It's an order from headquarters. <laughs> it's, it's a command from our commander-in-chief, and he's saying, you are my witnesses. So the idea here is everywhere you go, Jose, go to work, you talk about Jesus. You, you look for opportunities uh, and you don't duck, you speak up. Okay, don't duck, speak up. As you go to school, look for opportunities to tell people what Jesus has done for you. As you sit around the table at Thanksgiving, did you know that's Thursday? Anyway, there you go. Aren't you glad you came to church? <laughs> Heads up. Share with the people around the table the specific things you're thankful that Jesus has done for you. There's a good place to, chart, to start. Well, just share what has the Lord been doing for you? What has he done in your life? Now, pause with me for a moment and let's just be blunt honest. Okay? Most people who know Jesus, Savior and Lord. Most of us don't very often witness. We don't. Most of us, 
Um, for one reason or another, we don't share about Jesus. We don't talk to our family about Christ. We, we don't talk to our friends. We don't talk to our neighbors, our co-workers, our fellow students. So I, I want to offer you five common reasons why we don't witness about Jesus. And I'm going to follow that with an answer, okay? Uh, to respond to our common reasons why we don't. Um, first reason, reason number one, we don't witness because we've seen and heard it done poorly. We don't share about Christ because we've been around Jesus followers and they've steamrolled and judged and insulted people. They, they just have been fairly rude with their harsh, blunt words. Okay, So therefore, I, I've seen it done poorly, therefore I'm not going to do it at all. So what's the answer to that? The answer is this, okay? Make sure you're filled with the love, the grace, the kindness of Christ. And if you're not, when you get the opportunity here, are you ready? There's, this is where the arrow prayer works. You, you fire up a quick, Lord, you just gave me an opportunity. Help me to speak with love and grace and kindness. Ready, Scott? Amen. And then take the opportunity. Okay? So, yeah, some do it poorly, but that's not a reason or an excuse for us not to. Second reason we don't witness, because I'm afraid how people might react. I'm afraid they might get angry, they might get upset at me. That's why I don't talk about Jesus to others. Okay? Jesus, several places, tells us, when people are mad at you when you talk about me, guess who they're really mad at? You ready? They're really mad. They, they don't like Jesus. They, they've rejected Jesus. So it's Jesus they're angry with. And here's the truth. Are you ready? Some people will actually be interested. Some people are hungry and thirsty for you to speak up and for me to speak up. And they really want to know more. Will, will some react poorly? Yeah, probably. <laughs> but some will say, thank you for sharing. And some perhaps will come to faith in Christ because you spoke up. Third reason we don't witness is because I'm, I'm more into lifestyle evangelism, Pastor Jeff. I show people with my loving actions I'm a Christian. So I, I, don't, I don't talk about Jesus. I love like Jesus, okay? Um, here's my answer. Um, that's a great way to start. The, a great way to start is not by talking about Jesus, but by showing people Jesus in you, okay? Great way to start, but eventually, are you ready? A witness has to speak up. So you get up in the courtroom, and now you got to swear I'm about to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, and then you need to speak. So to be a witness, yes, live like Jesus, but eventually you're going to have to speak up with your mouth for Jesus. Fourth reason we don't witness is just because my, my life is crazy busy. I, I'm busy, and, I, and I'm scheduled, and I just don't remember to talk about Jesus much. Um, don't do that much, but, but it's because I'm really busy with my life, okay? And my response, the answer is, the main thing is to keep the main thing the main thing. And if we're too busy for the main thing, which is what? To talk about Jesus then you're too busy, okay? You're majoring on minors, and you need to start majoring on the majors. We need to start sharing about Jesus Christ. Fifth reason we don't witness is in this crazy world, I love that last song, um, is, is the world uh, wild? Is it crazy? Yeah, it is. Uh, and I don't feel powerful or strong enough to stand up to a crazy world. Anybody feel that way? Can I just be honest? I, I, don't, I don't feel like I can stand up and talk uh, and share about Jesus. This is a wild, crazy world. 
So what's the answer to that? Go back with me to Acts 1 and verse 8. Look at it. The last part it says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. But you will receive, what is it? Power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. In 10 days, uh, biblically speaking, Acts chapter 2 happens. 40 days have happened, 10 more days. They're in the upper room, day of Pentecost. The Holy Spirit came on all 120 in the upper room. They received the Holy Spirit, and that's when the church age began. What's the church age? It's the age of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit comes and resides and takes up residence in all who believe in Jesus Christ. Doctrinally, Myron, we'd say you get baptized by the Holy Spirit at the moment of salvation. So when you say yes to Jesus Christ, he comes and takes up residence through his spirit in your life and mine. So here's my question. Where does the Holy Spirit live and abide today? Where? He lives and abides, takes up residence in all who know and follow Jesus Christ. So if you love Jesus and are a follower, guess who's in your life? Guess who's taken up residence? And he did that the moment you said yes to him, uh, Jesus Christ through his spirit. Okay? Now the question is, are you filled and controlled with the Holy Spirit? Or are you filled and controlled with old sinful selfish you? Do you understand? But now go back to 1A. Here's what I want to show you. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes. The very same power, yep, it's something to yell about, the very same power that filled the 120 in the upper room, that same Holy Spirit comes in my life and yours. Point, point to it, yeah, right here is where that same Holy Spirit lives today, okay? The same power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead is living in you. Look at that screen. The same power that literally, bodily, physically, the most powerful event in all of history that raised Jesus from the dead, guess where it lives? Right here, okay? To live strong for King Jesus, to speak up for King Jesus, to stand up to this crazy world through the power of the Spirit, okay? If we take the time to learn how to get spirit filled and we learn how to get full of the Holy Spirit. Are you ready? The power is available. There's no shortage of power to stand up and speak. That's what he's saying. I'm going to give you the Holy Spirit who will give you the power, the wisdom, the insight, the tact, the love, the grace to speak up for me. The Holy Spirit says, I, I'm, I'm ready right here. I'm ready to be used. So here's the question then. Am I going to obey the clear command and allow the Spirit and His power to work through me in my mouth? Or am I going to choose to ignore it and disobey? Let's put the discipleship path back up on the screen again. Thanks, Caleb. The first steps... The, uh, the new here, next steps, and come are all about, with the family here, we're reaching out and inviting and sharing Christ, and we want to take people who are interested in Jesus and the Bible and church, and we want to take them to the next step. Does that make sense? That, that's what this is all about. New here... We've, we've actually said, what is that for us? Well, we have a luncheon. Uh, I think we're going to do it, what is it, three, four times this, this year, this next year, 2022. Come, get to know us, introduce. We're going to share our values. We talked about that last week. Get a sense of who we're about. We get to know them, get their contact information and our goal and our prayer is that they would be ready to sign up for the next step, which is the next step lunch, okay? So we got a new here lunch. 
We want to kind of get to know you and you know us. And our goal is to get you to come to the next step lunch. And that's all about um, taking people through this path. Okay, we're going to give everybody a copy of that and talk about uh, the discipleship path. Where are you at on this? Kind of go through it with them, talk about baptism, membership, personally help them to discover their next step. Uh, come is come, get to know us, learn to follow Jesus with us. Check out Bible studies. We've got lady Bible studies. We've got a men's Bible study. Come. We want you to come to know Christ personally. That's huge. That's the main thing. We want you to get baptized. Um, we want to help you move from attending to being a disciple. Here's what we've discovered without a clear path. We're just hoping people figure this out on our own. And for too many years, the truth is, um, well, I, I hope they figure out how, how to move through and, and can become a fully developed follower of Jesus Christ. Our, our goal is get more intentional. In, in other words, we're going to get more intentional about helping people work through the discipleship path. We want to not just hope, but we want to prayerfully work them through this path. Um, it's been a lot of time, and I believe God has blessed and shown us and given us wisdom. So, final question. So what does that mean to me, right? You're thinking, okay, that's good. I'm, I'm glad you got this new path. Uh, what exactly are you asking us to do here this morning? Okay, two things. First, Jesus said we should be first witnesses in Jerusalem. Where is our Jerusalem today? Anybody know? Jerusalem would be right around where you live. It could be Petoskey. It could be Boyne City, Boyne Falls. Um, your Jerusalem is where you live, is where you work, where you go to school. Jerusalem is that city right around you. And it says... Our job is to talk about Jesus in our Jerusalem, okay? We talk about Jesus to people who don't yet know Jesus personally. Who's that? Starts with your family. Are there people in your family who don't yet know Christ? Uh, move on to your friends. Talk to your neighbors. Talk to your coworkers. Talk to your fellow students. I want to challenge us. I want to challenge me. Would you begin asking the Lord to give you this week an opportunity to speak up and witness, share about what Jesus is doing? Jesus, you've given me the same power that raised you from the dead. And now, Lord, I need that power. Help me to speak up in your power. Fill me, control me. I'm asking that your Holy Spirit would allow me to speak truth with a whole lot of love, and a whole lot of grace. That's the first thing. And, and I think it's clear. It, it's not a command. It's not a suggestion. It's a command. It's an order from King Jesus. Second action point. Would you consider signing up for plan your visit? Because that's a part of reaching out. That's a part of we're praying that we have dozens and dozens of guests come through and join us on Sunday mornings. Would you consider going out and talking to Myron at the plan your visit table? And maybe you're thinking, well, maybe, but I have a couple questions. Myron's there. He's got answers, okay? So talk to Myron. Bluntly, we're looking for smiling, friendly people who can treat our guests like family. So would you prayerfully consider signing up for training in two weeks, December 5th? We'll do it after the first service, meet in the prayer chapel. After second service, we'll meet in the prayer chapel. And hopefully, Lord willing, December 12th, ready to go. We'd love to have a big enough team that we could schedule you. If you're thinking, well, I'm not sure my husband or my wife is going to go for that We'll have room for lots of you 
who maybe it's just you and not your husband or your wife. Again, we'll make that work. Would you pray about it? Lord, what would you have me to do? I close this morning quoting the Prince of Preachers. That's what he's called. His name is Charles Spurgeon. Here's what he said. Listen close. If Jesus is precious to you, you'll not be able to keep your good news to yourself. You'll be whispering it into your child's ear. You'll be telling it to your husband. You'll be earnestly imparting it to your friend. Without the charms of eloquence, you'll be more eloquent. Your heart will speak. Your eyes will flash as you talk of his sweet love. It cannot be that there's a high appreciation of Jesus and a totally silent tongue about him. If you really know Christ, you're like the one that's found honey. You'll call others to taste of its sweetness. You're like the beggar who's discovered an endless supply of food. You must go tell the hungry crowd that you found Jesus. You're anxious that they might find him too. Movements move. If Jesus has moved in your life and you're not moving, you're not sharing, you're not witnessing, something's wrong. (laughs) Why doesn't Jesus just save us and whisk us up into heaven? Think about it. If, If he didn't have anything for us to do, he'd just say, you're saved, come be with me. Let's start eternity right now. He doesn't do it that way. You ready? Look at me. Because we have a job to do. Most of the people around us are desperate to know Jesus that has changed us. Think about it. We know Christ. It's the major, major in life. And we're staying silent on it. Won't you today ask the Lord to send somebody this week by you? that you can speak up and share Jesus with? Lord, send somebody my way. I'm I'm ready. In your power, in your strength, I'm going to speak up for you. Let's pray together as we close. Lord, thank you. Thank you that uh, you love lost people. Matter of fact, that's why you left the glory of heaven and took on a human body. That's how much you love lost people. And Lord, we just confess, we've been found (laughs) as your children. You're our Savior and King. You've adopted us into your royal family. You've empowered us with your spirit. You've given us a church family to love and to care for. Lord, you've blessed us with an instruction manual for life. Lord, we are so rich and blessed. So I ask this question. Are there any of you who say, Lord, unlock my jaw today? I'm ready this week to speak up. Lord, I want to do it with love and grace, full of your spirit. So help me to be ready. And by God's grace, Lord, I'm going to speak up. I'm going to look for an opportunity. I'm going to pray that you might bring somebody my way this week that I can share what you've done and what you're doing in my life. Help me to speak up. You could be watching online or here in person, and maybe the truth is you don't even know if you're a follower of Jesus. Not sure if his powerful spirit is alive and working in you. I have great news. You can go from being lost to found right now. Jesus, I believe you are the sinless Lamb of God, the only one. And I believe you took my place on the cross. Jesus, I believe you shed your blood for my greatest problem in life. I'm a sinner. I believe you took my place in the grave. And I believe, Jesus, you arose from the dead and you did that for me. Just tell him that. I believe that. And right now, by faith, Jesus, I open the door of my life and I receive you. Save me, Lord. Come in. 
I'm ready to follow you, no turning back. Lord, help us not to neglect the major, major in life, which is to know your son and share the good news with the people around us. We love you. It's in Jesus' mighty name we pray.